Are you a PowerPoint user and you want to be able to place your live camera into your slides? Well, you're in the right place. Today, we are going to talk about using Cameo in PowerPoint, which is a feature that enables you to put your live camera feed into your slides. This is actually a really great option if you want to have more control over when your audience is paying attention to the slides and when they are paying attention to you as the speaker. Often when we screen share slides, they take up most of the screen real estate, and then they might have you in the side, this little tiny speaker window. Well, this enables you to have a little bit more balance and a little bit more control. Now, if you've never met me before, my name is Kat, and I help people to stand out in virtual meetings and presentations. And this feature is one of the things that will definitely help you stand out if most people are used to just looking at a big slide deck and having a really small speaker window. So let's dive in. We have PowerPoint set up. I set up a very generic company slideshow. This only has seven slides and you'll see a combination of a title slide. We've got some bullet points. We have a little image here and then just some really simple slides with some statements on them. So we are going to turn this into a cameo presentation. Now, because I'm going to bring in my camera, I'm going to hide my camera for now. So here we have our PowerPoint open. And yes, I am using this on a Mac. It might look a little different if you are on Windows. We are going to go to the insert option and go all the way over to the far right where you will see Cameo. When you click insert Cameo, it's going to pop this little camera here and you'll see Right now, you don't see a camera feed. That's because the preview has been turned off. This is one option if you wanna set up your slides without actually looking directly at your camera, you can set it all up and then you can always add your camera later. So here, it just placed it in the bottom corner, but we can actually move this around. We can resize it. And first, let's focus on choosing the camera we want. Up in the top left, you will see there is a button that says camera preview and there is a drop down. This drop down allows you to pick your camera if you have more than one. So I have a FaceTime camera, I have an Ecamm Live virtual camera, and I have CamLink. Also, if you're using OBS with the virtual camera, that will work as well. I am not going to choose Ecamm Live because that's what I'm using to make this video. So I'm going to choose my CamLink, which is already selected. When I turn this on, you'll actually see the camera, but you're seeing way more than you usually see because I typically crop things out and I don't want you seeing this hair light of mine. So we can actually adjust and that's the first thing, first thing I want to do. We can start to play around with how this is set up and I recommend using over here, we've got the crop. So you'll see if I kind of hover my mouse, if I click crop, I don't know why it hides the preview. It would be way more helpful if it didn't, but I'm going to bring this in and kind of estimate based on, and now it shows up. I'm trying to estimate how much I want to bring this in. Now it does have, you'll see it's got this little shape over top, which is actually a nice recommendation for being centered. I still think it's a little bit wide. So I'm going to bring this in here and bring it in here. That looks more like what I'm comfortable sharing of my studio setup. So I've hidden the light and I've hidden the door and the bookcase. So now I'm all set and I have cropped this. Oh, I'm not all set. <laughs> We're going back to, we click on this, which opens this camera format. We're gonna click crop one more time because you can see at the top of my computer. So we are going to do one more adjustment up here. And I think I've successfully hidden everything I want to hide maybe the light switch, but we're not gonna get too hung up on it. So the first thing we did was crop to make sure that you have the right things showing or visible in your camera. The next thing you wanna do is consider what's the shape that you want. And if we click on the camera, this will open that camera format option. You will see there are some presets of camera styles and they get a little, they get a little funky. You can do a hexagon, you can do this diamond shape. Honestly, I would say stick to the basics, stick to a square, a rectangle, or a circular image. That's what people are used to and you don't wanna be a distraction. So we will take this, let's just make a really big circle because I'm introducing the main slide. I'm gonna make actually really big. And just like objects in PowerPoint, you can play around with bringing it back and forward. So we are going to send this backwards twice. I'm overlapping here. So I am going to add, I'm going to insert a shape. So I've now closed the window. I can say insert, insert shape. 
And we are going to create like a lower third for this slide here. And this is obviously covering the words. We will send this backwards. And now we have our title slide and we have me. And there looks like there's a small delay. I apologize for that. That is a tech demo challenge. So we have me in this circular picture and I have just added a background. Obviously you can change and adjust the colors, but I have now just kind of brought this for, brought myself to the center when I'm introducing this presentation. So once you've got that set up and how you like it, if you notice, if you go to another slide, maybe you want to add the camera here. If I say insert cameo, it starts me off all over again. I would have to do the entire thing over zoom, crop, pick the shape. So instead let's delete that. What we can do is go to the primary slide. We will copy. So I'm going to say command or control C and we'll go to the next slide. Now, when I paste it, obviously this is not where I want it on this slide. So I can start to bring this lower and resize it and we can put this where we want. Now I'm going to get into tips later, but I'll share with you why I don't actually love the idea of putting it over here. But for now, we are going to leave it over here. So this is what you've got when it comes to the camera. The other thing I want to show you is that when you are on this camera format up here at the top, you will actually, <laughs> you maybe you could tell the tip, but I'm going to go back to this slide for a moment. Up here, when we go into, when we click on the camera, we've got camera format. You will also see there's a format pane. This allows you to have things like a border if you want to put a border or you can have a solid line. I guess they're already is one we can choose the color. So maybe I want a white border and I can start to play around with how wide I want that border. So you can start to play with this. If you want it to be partially transparent, gives it a little bit more of a gray hue. You can do that. You can also see shadow presets. I would be careful with these. You can see the format of the camera. So this will adjust the shape, which you can either do with the mouse or you can do here. And finally, there are things like picture corrections, picture color. For example, if you wanted to give it a hue, maybe I want this to be black and white. I don't know that I would do too much with this. Maybe if you're having some fun with your presentation, but honestly, avoid going a little bit too much or having too much fun. For example, when you're playing around with this, you might realize you can do different shapes. Like I could do a heart shape. This is probably not going to be appropriate for the vast majority of situations. So I'm going to recommend that you stay with the tried and the true. And also throughout your presentation, you want to make sure that you are, are <laughs> kind of keeping it consistent. Don't mess too much with your audience. Stay focused on the message, not on fun and quirky things. I will talk about doing some things that help with attention, but right now let's just keep that in mind. The other thing is, let's say you like this slide and you want to reuse this. You can actually just duplicate this slide over and over. So when you duplicate a slide, that is another way for you to keep the camera exactly how you want. And then you can just work on changing and updating the text for your slide. So that is definitely an option. I'm going to delete that extra slide. So let's go over some tips, shall we? Some helpful tips when you are making your cameo presentation and the first one is notice where you are looking and this brings me back to this second slide so when you when we were on this first slide and when i look at my notes or the presentation i am looking in a direction that makes sense i don't like this because if i am looking over at the notes i am now looking away from the bullet points please don't do that <laughs> In this case, you actually do have an option. So if I come over here and I go to my camera format, you can see under the rotate option, I could actually flip my camera. So now if I were to look this way, I'm actually looking towards the bullets, even though that's not the way I'm positioned. However, if I have this on some slides, and then I go to the next slide, that might be a little bit jarring that you are suddenly flipping back and forth. So I would say, if you know you are always going to be on the right of your slides, maybe you can just flip your camera or if your monitor is on the other side or you're looking the other way, perfect. Don't look away from your slides. If you flip, stay flipped. Do not flip back and forth. So that is my advice there. 
I am going, well, I can leave that for now. So that's the first tip. The second tip is use the camera strategically. When I say this, I mean, think about how you want to use it. For example, on this slide, the title slide, I want to be front and center because I am going to introduce why we're having this presentation, why people should pay attention and what we are going to cover. But if we take a look at this slide, this is a graphic. It might not be the best visual in the world, but it's there as an example that if we are going over something where you actually want your audience to be paying attention to the graphic, I don't wanna put my face on here. However, you can get strategic like duplicating this slide. So if we duplicate, which might, uh, might, okay, so we have now duplicated, I have two slides. I am going to preface past performance. So I am going to talk about past performance before I show the graph. In this case, I want to be shown. So I am going to delete the graphic on this page. I'm going to do something similar to the title slide, which is bring this down. And we are going to duplicate here. So I'm going to copy and then on this slide, paste. So we've got me here pasted. We are going to arrange and send, send back. And I will once again, add a shape at the bottom. And you can obviously pick what you like when it comes to these. I'm going to just adjust that and we will send that backwards. So I might actually first, before I show the graph, want to show you and talk about past performance. So this is what I mean by strategic. First you talk about it, then you show it, and you don't want your face on here because you want people to focus on what matters, which in this case is the graphic. The third tip, this is where I do actually encourage you to occasionally add transitions. Don't go overboard, but you can have transitions that helps your audience to pay attention. We have short attention spans, so the more you can change things up or do something that's unexpected, then people will pay attention. And the one I wanna show you is actually what's called, if we go to this transitions tab, it's called morph. And let's click on morph, which is actually going to change from this slide to this slide, so the one before to this one, it will do the morph for you. So if we play this presentation, so let's play. Okay, we're gonna go to our slideshow and play from current slide. So I'm now in my slideshow mode. And when I go to the next slide, it has this transition. And so this I find visually interesting. It also is paired really nicely because I was talking about past performance. Let's go back. So in this slide, <laughs> I guess it froze there for a moment. I was leading into past performance, what to pay attention to. And then when it was time to go to the next slide, it had a really nice transition that was very gradual and I, th I think looks really nice. So these are the type of things that you can do in order to create some interest. So that is my introduction to the Cameo for PowerPoint couple of tips to keep in mind and really I think have fun, but not too much fun. Focus on the content, the presentation, what are the most important things to say? And when you do that, it will help you to stand out in your virtual meetings and presentations.